I'm Louise and this is our boat, this is our home, this is Mrs. McCall. You are the rabbit. Rabbit. I'm the rabbit, I'm Tweak from the Octonauts. <laughs> and you are, who are you? Uh, sometimes he's Indra, he's three years old and today he's started to ride a bike and I am Sebastian. Yes, we've, we've lived on the boat for, for 10 years now. It's gone in a flash. It's, it's the fastest time I think I've ever had in, in my life. But it's been an amazing, amazing 10 years. And it keeps changing, it keeps evolving. So we, we keep staying. There's been a few times we thought, oh, I wonder if it's the end of our journey. But it always manages to, to become something new. And then, and then we stay. Yeah, we'd spent about 10 years in India travelling. Really watched it change, watched, watched sort of commercialism and, and this world that we'd known and loved for so long developing into something new. And it made us think a lot about where the world was going, what the options could be for the future. And we felt to really explore that we needed to come home, we needed to be where we knew best really and discover it for ourselves. We sort of knew our town and not much else. So we thought about ways of traveling the country and a boat just seemed like a fantastic way of seeing, yeah, seeing, seeing England, learning what England was like, what are its people like, what's the landscape really like. Initially we had a motorbike and a tent and we were camping in Scotland for three months just before we got the boat. And that was beautiful. We really saw the landscape that way. It was gorgeous. And then coming down the country, we stopped at all the marinas everywhere looking for the boat. And it had to have space for a dark room. That was the key thing. And that's what made it tricky. And then almost home in Devizes, there it was. And we couldn't quite believe it. it just felt right. We came on. And it, the space felt good, it felt, felt more open than other ones. It looked grim at the time, but we've done a lot to it. But you just kind of know when you see something. Yeah, even, even so, we went to stay with Seb's parents and we went on the internet and looked at every boat we could possibly see before committing. And it was the right one and it was close to home. It was still a continuation of our travels. Previous, I'd, I'd bought a van in Australia, travelled around Australia, sold the van after it and I thought this was going to be the same, we'd get our boat, we'd go around the country maybe a year, maybe two years at absolute most and then we'd sell the boat and we'd travel and see somewhere else but it's hooked us, it, it, it's just we cannot move off until we find something better I think we'll stay here. Every year feels like a blessing that we've got another year to spend here one of those years out of the last 10 years, we actually weren't on the boat for the whole whole year. We put it away in a marina and we went traveling. And we came back, the boat was just as we left it and we carried on with our kind of traveling and living on the boat here. It still feels like traveling because every time you move space, it's, even if you know the spot, there's always something new to discover. We never used to travel as far. That's a big thing that's changed in 10 years. The, everything's become more formalized and it feels more observed and more regulated than it was 10 years ago. We used to sort of travel between Bath and Bradford on Avon, maybe go a little bit further, but it, that seemed to be okay. But now we really have to go from Bath to Devizes and up the flight. And I think that, that change has been quite an intense thing for the community because it's meant people have had to sort of spread their lives further and it spreads the community further and it makes it harder to, to travel together. It does mean you don't see people as much as often. But at the same time, people have really, really connected over it and it could be in part because the longer we're here, the more we know everyone and the more we feel at home in the community. It's become more popular from every aspect. I think there's a lot more higher boats and we used to know the numbers but there's a lot more boats in action every season. 
there's so many more cyclists, speed cyclists. We used to go to Dundas and you'd hardly see anyone. That, you know, only be a few walkers, but now it's traffic on the towpath mm -hmm. is more than it ever was. And we notice that having a child now, because they move slowly and they don't focus on what they're doing. So when the cyclists come, you've got to be more aware than ever before. I think our experience of it has just grown. I feel more and more at home. The more people we know, the more friends we have, the, the stronger the roots feel. It feels like more community things are happening than, than when we first moved on. There's a, a wood school this afternoon. At Christmas, because of COVID, it couldn't have the usual Christmas party, so that was broadcast on Facebook. So the people really, really active and really engaging and really bringing one, everyone together. So it's changed, everything changes. You change, people change, we all change. And some, some I remember perhaps with rose tinted glasses and some, some has changed for the better. It's, it evolves and I think it's wonderful that people are joining the community. That's something I worried about at one point that it would become harder and it would stop growing. Ginger, do you want some dal? Dal? Mm. Papa, is that mm. Mm. So we've got a bed that we built for Indra um, and he's, he's outgrown it. Um, so she'll be going in that. We've kind of gone mad on books. I think particularly with lockdown, there's not been much, much to do. So this is our bedroom. Um, I'm not actually in it anymore. It's, uh, it seems to be Indra and Louise are in here, but fortunately the bed is a pull-out bed at the front. So, so I'm there uh, until we figure out what to do, which will be eventually, we've got a dark room. It doesn't look again like a dark room because we've got mainly our books here, but the, the shutters close and this is where I do all the black and white printing. And eventually this will become a bedroom for Indra and and the next next child. Enlarger is hidden hidden behind all the clothes as we've slowly expanded and to make space main, mainly for toys. I think you can't help to notice you know our connection with India is is pretty much everywhere on the boat. I'm thinking of having a child on board it's it life does change your perception and your desires change with it, like what you find important change, so. We've changed the space a bit. I guess what would normally be in, you'd imagine in a child's bedroom, is just on the boat. It's it's his everything, everywhere. I, I, my office has kind of gone into a very small corner because not only do we live on the boat, but we work on the boat. And now we've got one child and another on the way. And it makes it, really good fun when you're moored with another family and the children play together in the little woods down there or they go to the river together and it's this amazing experience and it may only be for two weeks so you see it through a child's eyes and that's magical mm. we came the other day we were talking about trying to teach them that we're humans and and he came with all seriousness and earnestness he said i'm we're not we're not humans we're boaters <laughs> he, he is a he feels like he's a boater and the, again I can't stress the importance of this community enough because there are so many children yeah we can't sit on the roof anymore we used to spend hours oh, yeah. daily that the roof was part of our living space we'd have a rug and we'd go up there and sit and read and eat um, I don't think I've sat on the roof for three years now and that I do he's miss. He's a regular. He's, he's he's a regular. He's always trying to throw things into the canal. He's he's likely to trip into the canal. Um. Our whole relationship, we've been moving, so we're in a little room in India or a little room in the mountains, and then we were mm. in a tent. So this felt like a positive upgrade. You know, it felt like a huge space, mm. and we used to lean down the corridor when we first got the boat. Go, oh, it's so big, it's so big. And yeah, it's for us it's been really easy to manage being 
being a couple mm. and being a family. We've not we've not known anything else, so it's hard to to know how it would have been in a in a house. Um, the scariest moment was a lock. It was our first trip out. We'd had we'd finished all the work on the boat. We were off to the Thames, and we went into a lock. And a higher boat had gone in first. I was. I was on the boat, Louise was doing the paddles, and as we were going down, the boats started kind of falling in on each other. And we could not understand why, but it, that, at that moment I thought, okay, we're sunk. We've had the boat a couple of months, and it's going down. Louise ran like the wind. I don't think I've ever run so fast in my life. Quickly shut the paddles, opened up the water, came back up, and there was a huge kind of tree trunk in the lock yeah. that the higher boat said they'd noticed but didn't think it'd been a problem so as we went down we just couldn't fit so it just we got wedged and kind of moved um it really shook that really shook me indra's done well he's aware he's aware of the water and we're very aware of him when he was learning to walk we often put reins on just to feel that little bit safer and, um, but he's very, and he's very aware of cyclists now. He he does look around. He, I think he's more he's, aware than I am. Of cyclists. He's, he's very safety conscious, isn't he? Yeah. He's the one that will always remember to put his helmet on and his life jacket when we're moving. With the arrival of Indra, we we did get a car. It was laundry shopping. Now that we have it, we wouldn't go without it, and it's. It's been incredible. We I was cycling a lot more. I was doing the cycling, the toilets weekly, doing all the laundry, kind of we had a trailer on the bicycle. Um, I guess all that I'm not cycling as much. quite as much doing that. Um, People manage with just a bike and children. I think the thing with all of the challenges on the canal, whether it's water, whether it's getting your shopping, whether it's cleaning your laundry. If you have time, it's it's not a challenge. It's quite good fun. You know, when we come here after we've been in India, I'm just so glad not to have to wash everything in a bucket. That's, that's good. Yeah. You know, to go to somewhere and it all comes back dry and fresh is amazing. Our water lasts 10 days. 10 days. Some people's water lasts longer. Ours last 10 days, but that's okay. We can, you know, moving every 10 days is fine. With our tank in 10 days, we can have a shower every day. Indra can have a bath. We can do the washing up whenever we want. Well, we're it's quite liberal with it. It's not kind of measuring out a cup to put in the kettle to boil. We, it, I'd, I'd it, rather feel clean and live and live in a clean environment and have to go to the water point a bit more often. People who don't live on boats worry about how they'd manage, but I think once you're on, you you sort of learn learn to get on with it, learn to choose things that are 12 volt. That made a big difference for us. We initially our lights weren't LED, and we were charging things from 240, and and that made it all harder. As soon as we got 12 volt chargers for things and got rid of the things that we just didn't need. That made a difference. At the beginning, I had a, a food processor, and that's gone now. We've got a one that you can pull with a pulley. And I think slowly over the years, we've managed to filter out unnecessary electronics. Okay, so in the in the summer, we've got the solar panels, and they work brilliantly. And then in the winter, they they help. They they definitely give power. But we do run the engine in the winter to top it up. And finally, after years, we've started turning the fridge off through the winter. I think everyone else has been doing it for much longer, and that's made a huge difference, because that's, that's our biggest consumer, is the fridge. Under the cratch, we've got just a little box, and we put our food in there, and it's cold enough that, yeah, all, all winter we can manage with that now. We've always survived off of um, our photographs, off of printing. And the boat was an opportune place to to make make a dark room and use the 57 foot as a shop. We were printing photos, we've always sold them, and we realised also that we were selling to a lot of people 
on boats and frames were were chunky they 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 take up room so we ended up actually finding a technique so we could print onto tiles so we found these porcelain tiles and uh, we put hooks on the back or velcro and that way we could um, they're very handy and easy kind of to package and put on boats once that was steady and running and we could survive off that we decided to make a book of our 10 years so it's, it's actually the same picture that I'm showing you twice here and this one is focused more on the community here through the seasons so it's it's our life on the canal I, I feel when we moved on the canal 10 years ago it was pre all the big shows all the kind of the BBC or was it ITV doing their shows it was still unknown so it inspired us as a way of life and as such a beautiful thing to do to try and capture Britain so we've always used them um, roller flex cameras so this is um, I'm going to show you so the 1950s cameras so uh, I think I think they're beautiful I think it's it's kind of a bit like a vinyl compared to digital music it's, it's, it's got a depth to it it's got a beauty to hold it's it's mechanical it's built in the 1950s um, it's only 12 pictures per roll it's, it's got a beautiful depth the colors are are deep when you print particularly if you're printing kind of in the dark room the the colors and the pigment or the the, the light that you're playing with is right in the paper We've always had our cameras with us and we photograph everything we do, we photograph the people around us to the point that people say, oh gosh, where's your camera today? So we had this collection of pictures growing and then when we travelled the country we started to realise that the way we perceived the community here wasn't always the same as the way it was perceived more widely and that there was a lot of fear and prejudice and misunderstanding about the community and about the type of people that live on a boat without a home mooring. And it became more important for us to involve ourselves in that. And the only way we felt we could contribute to safeguarding the community was to put our photographs and our thoughts together into a book. Because often we'd speak to people who had negative views about the boats looking scruffy or people not looking as they'd want them to look and things like that and we'd speak to them for a while and they'd they'd start to see it from a different perspective and we thought well how can we reach more people how can we spread that message that it's a beautiful community it's a wonderful way of life people are friendly their boats may not get the best maintenance on the outside through the winter but inside they're beautifully kept you just can't see it and we thought a book, a book would be the way to do that because you can, you can reach people without being physically present. It emerged slowly the idea of telling a story through the seasons because we wanted it to be beautiful. We didn't just want it to be about a social issue. We wanted people to feel the beauty of the way of life, to feel the intimacy of it and to sort of have a connection with the people and the families and the people who live on boats on their own, the people who, you know, all the people, everybody here. So to tell the story through beauty was important to us. I think it's a really important space. I think socially in the world in which we live, somewhere where you can live affordably, somewhere where you can feel a little bit more of a sense of freedom I think is really important for people's souls, for their spirit, for their for their way of way of being. And it's one of the few spaces we've found in the world where so many people have come together independently of one another. So you have this sort of autonomous autonomous lifestyle, but united in a community. Yeah, it's been invaluable to us, and I know that it is to a lot of other people and to have the ability to raise a family close to nature with community is it's so important and I want that to be available to other people so I think the more people that know the more people that engage the more positive energy is surrounding it the 
best chance it has to survive and thrive. That was a huge motivation behind the book.